The Warriors enter the NBA Finals with the highest postseason average for three-pointers in a game in NBA history. Cleveland averaging over 14 and Golden State averaging 12 and a half. We welcome to the show someone who knows a thing or two. Yeah. About hello, hello. Plays. Yes, yeah. he does. Tim Legler in the house. Hello again. Hello. How are we doing? Looking forward to this as oh, everybody is. We all are, right? So can the Cats keep this up in terms of the three-point shooting in this series against the Warriors? I actually think if they try to match the Golden State Warriors with the three-point shooting, they're, they're doomed. Hmm. Okay. They have to play a different style. Wow. Um, and when you look at what they've done in the postseason, and I know I've said this a number of times, but it's the truth. I think they actually gave the Raptors two games because they fell so in love with that shot that they had a bad imbalance in their offense because they're at their best when they utilize LeBron and Kyrie as attackers. Guys that get in the lane, force help, converge, and then you take the three-point shot when it's there. But in those two losses to the Raptors, they took 82 three-point shots. 25 free throw attempts. They basically allowed Toronto to defend them because they became predictable. You're not going to match what Golden State does from the three-point line. What you can do is dictate terms a little bit better because you have some guys that can be physical and dominate the game in the lane, whether that's LeBron with, with his post-ups and his drives or it's Kyrie Irving using ball screens, getting into the lane and forcing a convergence. And then you take the three on a kick out. I think a good number of threes for Cleveland is 25 to 30. That's a good number. When you start getting up into that 35, 40 range, I think now you're playing a style of basketball that's going to doom you against a team like Golden State who's much more comfortable taking that high volume of three. So I think they need to be careful with that. There's a red line for them, and it's somewhere around 25 to 28 threes. Look at that number throughout the series. Would you coach that if you were coaching them? Would you coach them out of shooting threes? I would thoroughly emphasize let's make sure we put pressure on them to defend us in the paint. LeBron, Kyrie especially, don't settle. Don't take the quick one up the floor if that's the first shot that's available because they have guys that can hit that shot. But if you play that game with Golden State and there's a lot of long rebounds coming out, you're going to have a really difficult time getting back in transition and matching up with them. You don't want this to be, I'll match your three with our three type of series because I think Cleveland has weapons offensively that can play in the paint and give you a little bit of red balance, even in Golden State can, who is very, very reliant on a three-point shot out of two guys. So let's be careful with that number. So if I'm Lou, I don't say, like, look, we're not going to take more than this. What I do say is let's probe inside first. Let's force them to make adjustments and send extra help, and those shots are better shots in rhythm, makeable, rather than the quick, rushed, hurried ones early in the shot clock that I think are going to lead to runouts on the part of Golden State. Now you can't catch them. Stephen A. I respectfully disagree with my man Legs, and he knows that's rare because I know <laughs> he knows his basketball. But I respectfully disagree with him in this regard. Legs, you've got six different dudes shooting better than 44% from three-point range. Even Richard Jefferson is up there at 45%. Channon Fry at 57. Iman Shumpert at 47%. Kevin Love at 44%. Uh, I'm sorry, Iman Shumpert at 47%. Kevin Love at 44%. J.R. Smith at 46%. Kyrie Irving at 45% from three-point range. You've got six different guys shooting better than 44% uh, uh, you know, from three-point range. To me, if you show the ability to make three-point shots, they'll have to come out and defend you. If they do that, it will give them the ability to operate quicker on the inside, whether you have LeBron on a, on, a, on a post or Kevin Love in the post area. You'll have the ability to take advantage of somebody inside. I'm not saying that you don't go inside. I totally agree with you there. But I don't think you need to start inside out. I think you need to start outside in to see if, indeed, you are making those shots, forcing Golden State not to collapse, instead to come out and get you, because I think it exposes them not on just on the interior in terms of your ability to post with the LeBron or Love, but also your ability to get to the basket with some of those open lanes that them spreading out defensively are going to force them to surrender. I think that's how you can beat this team. Last year, Cleveland started inside out. They had no choice because they had no shooters. JR was off, and don't get me started with Della Vadova and the others. And so where did that get them? Yeah, it got them two victories in the first three games, but that was because of the, the, you know, the heroics of LeBron James. Outside of that, they got exposed over the last three games when J.R. Smith shot 12 of 42 
from the field. So I look at it from the perspective that if you have the ability to shoot those three-point shots, show it and show it early and put them on notice that it's something that they're going to need to contend with. And as a result of doing so, it will enable you to potentially do damage uh, on the inside like you just articulated. One of the things I will say, to be careful about those three-point numbers, they're inflated because of the Atlanta series. Atlanta made a decision in that series that they were going to trap LeBron James and Kyrie Irving all over the floor, chase them 30 feet from the basket, not rotate to the shooter, and Kevin Love and Channing Frye basically were taking shots that you take before the game yep. with nobody guarding you during the game. No, so, so those numbers are a little inflated, and I think as a result, we looked at this team as, oh, this is now, this is Golden State of the East with their three-point shooting. Yeah. Be careful if you play that way against the real Golden State. I think you're going to be in trouble. I, I think this is a team that needs to be careful. They got back to their roots in Game 5 against Toronto. In Game 3, Skip, they took 23 threes mm -hmm. in the first half of a loss in Toronto. Game 5, they took 21 for the entire game Great, in they, a 40-point win. But then they went back to Toronto and won Game 6, and they made 17 threes, Look, which is a lot. I'm not know? saying don't take yeah. them. Look, okay. I'm not saying you don't take threes. All what right. I'm saying is be careful if you match Golden State. If you think you're going to match Golden State in this series from the three-point yep. line, and that's how you're going to beat them, okay. I'd be careful because I think you're getting away from something that you have as an advantage over them, which is LeBron and Kyrie and their ability to play in the paint. But I don't think it's about trying to match them. I think that ultimately what your strategy is about beating them inside, the argument that I'm making that I think is somewhat different than yours, Legs, is that you're talking about attacking them on the inside. That's how you're going to beat them because you don't want to play their game. I get that. What I'm saying is I think showing the ability to hit the three will facilitate doing exactly what you say they're going to need to do in order to win. That's where I'm going. I don't think they're going to be able to do anything on the inside if they can't hit jump shots. That's what I'm saying. Okay, here's the difference to me. Back to your point. I'm more with you than with Stephen A. on this. The two hottest three-point shooters for Cleveland are Channing Frye and J.R. Smith, who aren't exactly Steph and Clay, right? Because if you look at their histories, Channing Frye, I remember the big playoff series back in Phoenix against L.A. I was rooting for Phoenix. Uh, and, and Channing Frye had, had had a hot hand, and he has an 0 for 6 game and a 1 for 7 game. It's possible. You know this being a great three-point shooter yourself. It's not like he's a star in the league who just knows he's going to make them. Not that Steph and Clay aren't capable of an occasional combined 2 for 15, but Channing Frye can go just as cold as he can be hot. We know J.R. Smith can go completely cold, sometimes at the worst possible times, as Stephen A. knows as he put out the APB for him in the the finals last year. What was he? 0 for 8 in game 4 and 4 for 14 in game 5. Okay? I don't know that you can trust those guys to carry you home against this team because I'm pretty sure Golden State will make a whole bunch of threes because it's just who they are. But, but how did LeBron, again, playing shorthanded, how did, how did he keep them? How did he put this team in position up two games to one with game four in LeBron's house? How did he do it? He'd dribble the air out of the ball, right? He would just dribble the ball up the floor. He'd dribble every clock down to just about nothing and then hope that somebody, maybe Delhi, could make a play, right? Did, didn't yeah. he? And, and, he kept, and then he did it on Christmas Day. Remember that game? Yeah. It was 88 83. He, he kept them in the game by controlling the clock himself. I love that. I, I think he's still capable of doing that in this series. He, he overpowered them physically, yeah. and he needs to rely on that. That's really the point yeah. I was making. And, and actually, to, to back up what you're saying, I think that's really what it comes down to. Who are you betting money on to make the threes? And that you say, I'm pretty certain these guys are going to have good series. I'm betting on Clay and Steph and, and, and even Harrison Barnes. I'm betting on those guys more than I would a J.R. Smith or a Fry or a Shumpert yeah. or the guys or even a Kevin Love. Yeah. He has been wildly inconsistent yeah. in the postseason. So, so that's what I'm saying. If, you, if you're going to play this game, the guys that I think are more reliable to shoot at a high percentage in this series, on this stage, under this kind of pressure, are the guys in Golden State. And that's why Cleveland needs to rely a little bit more on what they have that's unique to them, which is LeBron James overwhelming you physically by controlling the basketball, getting into the paint, forcing help. I think that is what makes you unique, more so than the three-point shooting. Yep, and Agreed. keeping that around 25, 30, you said earlier around the I think sweet that's spot a good number. Cap. I think that's a good number for them, because if, if they're taking 25 to 30 threes, they're probably getting 25 to 30 free throws, and that's a good number for them. When you see that imbalance, 35, 40 threes, 
18, 20 free throw attempts, I think they're in trouble. We'll be watching. Tim, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. From Timmy to Tommy, that would be Tom Brady, Skip Bayless. He hates when I call Wait, him Wait, you just Tommy. put Timmy and Tommy yeah. in the same set? I'll take it. Wow. I'll take it. Tommy. Wow. Yeah, they're both handsome, <laughs> handsome devils. Guys. Tom Brady trying should to... be on it. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to play yeah, nice with the Steve. NFL over Deflategate. Stephen A. never playing nice. We'll get into that subject. We'll see if his opinion changes on the quarterback when we come